Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Castle of Deceit, brought to us by Bunch Games, also known as Color Dreams or Wisdom Tree. Castle of Deceit is another unlicensed game which, because of that, features some pretty poor controls, terrible music, and just overall difficulty that's not a whole lot of fun to play. We play as Sibo, a young magician who is sent into the Castle of Deceit in order to get back the rune stones from the evil creatures that have stolen them. So here we go with Castle of Deceit for the NES. The game starts off with a pretty basic title screen. Once you press start, you'll get your opening story before the first level begins. The Castle of Aragain is our first level, and we start off as this wonderful wizard character, and we start making our way over to the right side. You'll have your jump button, and your other one will be your attack button, and as you attack, you'll notice that it comes out in a wave-like pattern. Enemies love to dodge your magic in this game. Thankfully, you have an unlimited amount of it, but every time you fire, certain enemies will actually jump up in the air trying to avoid it, and this can be quite frustrating. Your health is located in the upper right corner. Most of the levels, you'll have to find a key and then find the correct door in order to get to the next level, or the, at least the boss room of that particular stage. In this first stage, we move up, we gather the first key in the upper right corner, which allowed us to enter this room, and once in here, we have to move our way through a few different tricky platforms before coming back out to the main room and now heading over to the left to the next door and entering into the boss chamber for the first level of the game. All the bosses, with the exception of the final boss, works like this. You'll have a large character flying around the top of the screen, and you'll have to dodge him as well as other projectiles that he throws out. Keep an eye on your health. As in with a bunch of the unlicensed games, you can actually have more health than what is displayed. Once you see the health start to dissipate, be very cautious. Now, you can regain health from a lot of different enemies in the game. Basically, every level will have a particular enemy type that will drop health every single time. For example, in the second level of the game that we're now in, these purple birds will drop health every time you destroy one. When we're in the second area of the game, we'll have to work our way to the right, and then across the treetops all the way to the upper left corner. Enter this room, watching out for the butterflies. These enemies are quite annoying. Either take them out or trick them into rotating around you, or you'll have to do a jump over them at the right moment in order to avoid them as they keep liking to circle in patterns. In this room, work your way up the tree and grab the next key and then back to the door. Jumping in the game is extremely tricky. You'll notice that as soon as you start playing the game. Momentum is a big deal here, and sometimes you'll slip and fall right off of the edges of the platforms. With the key in hand, we go through the third door here in this big castle-like setting to the next boss, which ends up being a giant mantis head. For this boss, just like the other ones, we're going to be firing up at it as it tries to drop different projectiles down on us. It moves in a pretty sporadic pattern, there's no real set pattern with these bosses. Just be careful, keep a little bit of a distance, and if you see them coming close to you, just try to get out of the way of them so they don't run into you, as that'll cause a lot of damage. And when you get hit in the game, you will flash, but you're actually not invulnerable during that time. It just signifies you took damage. Sometimes enemies can keep draining that health really, really quickly, so you'll have to be careful. In level number three, work your way along the top of the screen, taking out a few enemies or jumping over certain ones, the ones that like to crawl, and take out skulls in particular for extra health. Then go through the door at the far left. Go to the next door on the right side while dodging more enemies, and enter the next immediate door. Here, watch out for this skeleton, take him out to grab some extra health, go through the next door. Here, go to the right side immediately and start firing to the left, taking out both of the wizard enemies. Do not go through the center door here as it'll take you back to the beginning of the level, instead enter the left door. Once you've done so, take out a couple of the crawling enemy guys and keep going over to the left. Pass the door after another wizard, you'll grab the key then backtrack to the door we just passed and go into the boss chamber. Yep, another quick level. Here is a giant skull flying around. This one moves a lot quicker and will fire a little bit faster. But thankfully, some of the other projectiles that we'll be noticing in later boss battles hasn't started happening yet. That's when things get really tricky as there's a lot on screen at one particular time. You have to actually defeat the boss of the level in order to move on. If you go through the door at the top before defeating the boss, you'll just respawn in the boss room. 
The next level is the Castle of Wind. Jump up and you'll be teleported to the top floor. You have to hit that opening where the rain is in order to get up here. Then go immediately to the next door to the left, jumping over the gap and then going through another door. Once here, take out the blue ghost and then drop down, jump over to the left and grab the key, drop down and grab the other key and go through that door. Here you'll grab another key to your right. You'll notice there's green pincher-like enemies that are trying to grab us. Do not try to run through them, as they're an instant death. Teleport back to the very top at the very beginning of the level and jump to the right now. Go through the door and it's time for another boss fight. Here introduces the other projectiles. You not only have to deal with the boss, but also flaming projectiles that will circle around and drop their own little projectiles. Once the boss is taken care of, we move on to the only real different level in the game, the Castle of Poseidon, which, well, isn't really a castle, but instead an underwater stage that auto scrolls. This is the longest level pretty much in the game because you're at the mercy of the game slowly scrolling. There's a variety of enemies here, including bubbles, but one of the more annoying ones is actually just the plants that stick out of the ground. They move just slightly so you can tell that they're actually enemies, and if you run into them, you'll take a little bit of damage. Sometimes they hide them beyond the other algae stalks, so you'll really have to have a key eye and be very careful when trying to actually go through these green messes. The jellyfish-like enemies like to try to avoid your attacks, but if you're able to get them to the left side of you, they'll slowly usually end up making it to the back on the left, and just keep getting dragged along by the scrolling screen and won't be able to bother you anymore. That'll give you ample opportunity to take them out. These stingray-like enemies are the ones you're wanting to destroy so that you can grab some extra health, especially after that last boss fight being the trickiest thus far, Usually when I make it to this stage, I have to rebuild my health at least a little bit. I've played a large amount of the unlicensed games from Wisdom Tree and Bunch Games, and I have to say that this one isn't the worst of them. This is actually at least somewhat playable in comparison to some of the other ones that have come out, like maybe Menace Beach or even Castle of Dragon is worse than this one. After a pretty lengthy level, we'll finally make it to the end, and now it's time to battle the boss here. He'll circle around just like all the rest, and we have to deal with the other projectiles. He's a lot quicker, and sometimes he loves to hug the bottom of the screen, so be very cautious and try to keep that health as high as you can going into the next stage. Sometimes it can be hard to even know if you're really doing damage to the guy, but as long as the projectile does make contact with him, you have hit him. Sometimes it likes to disappear, though it looks like a little bit before it even runs into the boss. When you're finally able to hit him enough times, he will go down and you can move to the door and to the next stage. Next up is the Castle of Flame. Do not jump through the flame waterfalls that are coming down. Instead, walk over them. Then you'll see a hidden door in the background. It's pretty tricky to see, but you'll want to go through it. The weird white ghost-like hat looking enemies that slowly move down are the enemies you're going to want to destroy in this level in order to gather some extra health. Unfortunately here we do have to jump through that waterfall, then take the door on the very far right and grab the key past this enemy. And be careful and work your way along the top part. Of course if you fall down you'll have to make your way back over to that right. There's also breakable parts of the platform, so be cautious of those while walking and jumping over things. Go through the door at the far left on the top, and it's time for the boss. No surprise, this one's a flame boss, and this is the hardest one so far because he moves pretty quick, he has even more projectiles than the last boss, and it's a never-stopping barrage of attack. Go through the door after he's gone and move on to, well, the Castle of Deceit. I thought the entire thing was Castle of Deceit, but apparently this one in particular is. For this level, work your way along the bottom, taking out the Stingray-like enemies that we met in the Castle of Poseidon, and they will grant you health each one you destroy. 
There's also some flying dragon-like enemies. They move a little bit slow and take them out every time that you end up getting to them if you can. At the far left, you'll have to wait for a cloud to slowly descend. Don't stand underneath of it as it actually does hurt you. Then jump on top of it to ride it up to the top, taking out another cloud before landing on a, well, a more solid, non-moving flashing cloud. Here, since I'm a little bit low on health, I'm going to try to bait this enemy into coming up just enough so that I'm able to hit it a little bit and get a little bit of that extra health. But it can be tricky to get this guy to actually come up, and enemies love to respawn even after you destroyed them, so it can be very annoying. Once I've gotten that little bit of extra health, I continue along this set of platforms back to the mountain. Be careful, I know things like to blend in with the background, but there are a few little jumps you'll have to make throughout here. And then when you're on the right side here, stand on this platform and fire at the eyeball moving back and forth until it's destroyed, then attempt to move to the next cloud. Ride across the one moving left and right, then ride the one up, make another jump and enter the door at the very top, destroying another one more enemy for a piece of health. You may have noticed another wizard appeared on that far left side. I'm not exactly sure what that ends up causing, but it happens a few times. This level is a huge maze. There are five doors here, and you have to enter them in a specific order in order to advance. Enter the number five door in the bottom right, then the door on the left on the middle platform, door number two, then back to door number five. Once here, take out the dragon enemies before attempting to go back down to the bottom, and now you'll want to go to the left side and enter door 4. Thankfully, these crab-like enemies do drop health every time you destroy them. Here, we're going to enter door number 2, take out some more of those flying lizard dragon-like enemies, and then we're going to make a jump over to the right side and enter door 3 for the first time. Once here, take out another enemy, grab the health, and go through door 3 one more time to complete the area and move on to the prelude of chaos. Here introduces these tank enemies. These guys do a lot of damage. You can try to jump over them, but they cause a bunch of damage, so you're going to want to hit them from a distance. There's also webbing in the background. Walking through this webbing will hurt you, so what you'll have to do is actually jump through the webbing in order to avoid taking damage. Stand in between the two webs here and keep firing to the right to destroy the tank before jumping through the other web and going over. The skulls in this level are the ones that are going to be dropping the health. Once you make it to the far right, you'll go through a door and end up on the middle level. Once here, watch out for some of those jumping shrimp frog enemies, and then to the next door. After another door, you'll have, well, guess what? Another door, very similar to the level we dealt with earlier. Now here, you'll have to battle the wizards again. Keep firing at them. You can't enter the middle door right now, but we'll be coming back to it this time. Enter the door on the far left, watching out for another jumping frog enemy and another tank. Destroy both from a distance before going over to the left. Fire at this skull if you can, go past the door and another wizard, and grab the key. Now do not go through this door, instead go back over to the right and enter the door we previously came from. And because enemies respawn quickly, you'll have to deal with that tank we just took out again. Take out the tank, go through the door, and then once back here in the wizard room, go to the left a little bit or just fire straight on, take out both wizards if you need to, and enter that middle door. In the next chamber, you'll have a skull, as well as a floating eye, and a wizard. Take out the skull if you can. These guys really like to be annoying during this segment. As I fire at the wizard, he was falling, but he ends up jumping to avoid my fire, and ends up getting up to the middle platform, which is pretty humorous, because when I go back to the left, he falls down, and I don't even have to worry about him now. The platform, the first one moves pretty slow, the second one moves quickly, but you'll jump on it and up to the top floor and go through the door. You'll then be in the same exact setup, except this time there's another floating eye and a skull, but no wizard. Get up to the top and enter the door. Now begins the trek to the final boss room. Here's a lot of skulls, there's weird pink ghosts, and plenty of health to grab if you can grab it, that is. There's moving platforms that will slowly fly back and forth to the left and right that you'll have to use in order to advance to the different platforms. 
There's also some weird green-like bird enemies. Stay on a platform and destroy as many enemies as you can see in front of you before attempting to make some of the jumps. Sometimes the skulls get really stuck on that right side, and no matter what I do, they don't seem to come back off the right wall, allowing me to actually hit them. Here I'm going to stand on this platform as much as I can, take out the ghost on that far right. Even though the skulls are hitting me, I have plenty of health at this point. And once I'm able to get a little bit of a walkway, go over to that right and enter the final boss room. For the final boss, go to the left and destroy the tail and the left hand. You'll also destroy the pink ghost in the process. Once the tail and the hand are gone, just stand right here and keep firing upwards. The right blast won't be able to hit you, and you'll be able to keep hitting the left eye over and over again to defeat the boss. Go through the door here, and you have completed Castle of Deceit. You get a one screen, a little bit of text, and that's it. And once you press the button, you'll move back to the title screen, and you can start the game all over again. But with that, that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoy.